Hey, how's it going? So the Ange Postacoglu era is well and truly underway at Tottenham now, isn't it? Life after Harry Kane doesn't actually seem that bad when a result like they had this weekend against Burnley 5-2 with a hat-trick for Son Heung Min seems to make everything seem rosy again, doesn't it? And rightly so. I think Spurs have had a difficult few seasons, haven't they, with the, the way the ownership is at the moment. And we're looking to say their reliance on Harry Kane, but I think the way they played was always so centred around him that Rightly, we were all asking questions as to whether they could deal with no Harry Kane there. That kind of void, that kind of contribution from a, one particular player to a team. Is there any bigger than that, than Kane with Spurs? Probably not. So far under Pasta Coglu, they've managed to sort of figure out the formula that makes them tick. And in this game against Burnley, at Burnley as well, I mean, traditionally a difficult place to go. But under Vincent Company, a little bit of an unknown. And make no mistake, Burnley brought the game to Tottenham in an attacking sense. They really went for it. They didn't sit back and defend. And for that reason, it was a really open game. It was up to Tottenham really to take advantage of that. And wow, they absolutely did that in a fantastic fashion. The effect that Kane being out of the team has on where the focal points are going forward for Spurs. But it's unleashed Son Heung Min in a way that we've only seen in glimpses really. He's the main character it feels now with a supporting cast of the likes of James Madison, Mana Solomon as well, who was really effective. Seen some liking his, his kind of way of playing to Aaron Lennon in his prime, which is an interesting comparison. But Madison and Son are really the heartbeat of the Spurs attack now. But in honesty, goals could have come from, from anywhere. It felt like the free-flowing, creative way that Spurs played was enabled, obviously, in part by how cavalier Burnley were, left so many gaps at the back. But you've got to have the right calibre of players to finish the, the job, really. And the goals reined in for Spurs on the back of that. Every single time they scored, it was from a position of, of Burnley creating gaps big enough for Spurs to exploit. And with the likes of Madison around, whose who razor sharp accuracy was really evident here. And Son, whose drive to get to goal is, is still there, even though we doubted him for a while and whether the best Son was still here at Spurs at the age of is it 31 now? I think this is evidence that it definitely is. Now, it was a really slow start to this game against Burnley. They were down within four minutes, and that could have been a real setback to Spurs, Spurs teams of old, but in this game, it, it, it didn't bother them in the slightest. In fact, they were more galvanised, really, to get back into the game as soon as possible. And I think the response of the Tottenham players to going behind, not just going behind, but going on to win so emphatically, is an indicator of how mentally much stronger they are compared to seasons gone by. And I think that's the difference a coach who inspires the team, who believes in the team. That's the difference it makes. And with the likes of Antonio Conte and Jose Mourinho at the helm prior to this, you can see why that confidence might have been chipped away in the past. But under Postacoglu, there's a breath of fresh air. There's a new lease of life to some of the players that seem sort of stagnant and stale and dormant in a game like this. And so far this season, it's been a team effort. And that's the key here. This is a team now without Harry Kane, it feels like it's 11 parts working together to produce the kind of display that scored five goals against Burnley away. Postacoglu's influence and proactive approach to coaching people, players, in a human way has really galvanised a few players positively, including Yves Basuma, I think, is the player, is finally the player that, that we saw signed from Brighton with such fanfare last summer. And Christian Romero as well, one of the most promising centre-backs in European football, signed by Spurs, again, to, to a great deal of expectation, flattered to deceive so far, struggling for confidence, but suddenly, after a few games of the new Premier League season, looks really formidable. Looks like an actual potential world-class talent again, dare I say. Dejan Kulisevsky as well. Fantastic start to his Tottenham career. Has fizzled out of late, but this season has come back slightly more rejuvenated and revitalised. And where he fits into this Tottenham attack as well could be really influential to how they perform as a team. It feels like they've got a lot of dimensions to their attack now, which again, let's remind ourselves, they've lost Harry Kane. It's amazing to think that they're probably a better all-round attacking team from what we've seen so far, although it is early days, than they were with Kane as their central focal point. And that all has to go to Ange Postacoglu. He's been dealt a really rubbish hand, really, with the Kane situation, but he's managed it superbly. He has the charisma in abundance. He has like an authority about him, which I really like. He commands respect, I think, from, from journalists. And I think the players must kind of feel that about him too. For a manager that was kind of sneered at really as being somebody that won everything in Scotland with Celtic, coming to the Premier League, how's he going to adapt? Is he good enough? Well, I think so far, everybody's got their answer, haven't they? He's doing a fantastic job. Spurs fans, how are you feeling about this season so far and the season ahead? If you're new to the channel, please do give us a like and subscribe. Leave your comments below on how you feel Spurs have performed in this game and how you think they're going to shape up for the season going forward. 
And what do you think to Ange Postacoglu as well? He's a, an interesting character, isn't he?